this left me out, get to Australia. <laughs> Welcome to Modern Grand Tour with me, Garland Lowe. After completing the European leg of my round the world journey, we now arrive in the world's largest country, Russia. Riding the full length of the famous Trans-Siberian Railway, we'll couch surf with locals along the way to get an insider's view of the fascinating Russian culture. Beginning in the western part of this Eurasian country, my new Russian friends and I explore St. Petersburg, Moscow, Vladimir Suzdal, Nizhny Novgorod, Perm and Yekaterinburg. Then in the eastern part we discover Tobolsk and Tumen, Novosibirsk, Okutsk and Okhon Island, Ulan Ude, Habarovsk and finally Vladivostok. In this 13th and final episode across Russia, and the 21st in this Modern Grand Tour series, we'll celebrate reaching the far east coast of Russia, play an impromptu gig, go into a submarine, and of course, meet the locals. So let's explore my last city on the Trans-Siberian Railway, Vladivostok. They say uh, it's the San Francisco of Russia, uh, Vladivostok. Definitely. With the hills, the mountains, fresh air. Ah, oh, lovely. And meeting my couch surfing host at the station, my first place of visit was to see something else that Vladivostok and San Francisco have in common. Maria's just driven us to the most amazing place. <laughs> Look at this! How cool is this? Right, I'm surrounded by the Pacific waters. I'm going to do the thing that I've always wanted to do since I, since I started this journey, knowing that I was going to come to go to Vladivostok, which was this. I'm going to touch the Pacific. Uh, oh, I'm going to wash my face with it. Oh, that's so nice. Wow. <laughs> so I crossed the English Channel from London into France, across the Baltic, from Sweden to Finland. Now I've reached another milestone, the end of my, of my Russian trip. So it feels really good. And the weather's nice. Uh, and Vladivostok is great. And Miria, you're great. And Thanks. everything is just great. And it's just a happy day, a happy time. And I've still got two more days left to, to see Vladivostok. It's only, can only get better. Golden Bridge, like in San Francisco. Uh, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Golden, Golden Gate Bridge. So they have the Golden Gate Bridge. Yes. You have the Golden, Golden Bridge. And my first thoughts of Vladivostok is it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing because you have the hills surrounding the city, and then the architecture within the city is both a mix of um, old St. Petersburg style uh, buildings and new uh, developments. We then went to the picturesque Sportivnaya Harbour with its inner city beach and an embankment that contained a modern art sculpture park. More uh, modern art uh, here, so uh, some sculptures and more sculptures. Uh, what have we found? Oh, I think uh, Maria's found something interesting. Some modern sculpture. Okay, let's have a look. Wow! I wonder what the meaning is behind this. I think the person who designed the rock in glove, I think he's probably a genius. Right, so uh, I'm off to uh, go that way and uh, right, see you later. We've decided to go to uh, the Chinese district mm -hmm. of Vladivostok. I can yeah, already smell yeah. the Chinese food. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> they wanted to reach it. Let's try. I've been eating a lot of Russian food on my journey and um, I haven't on the whole greatly enjoyed it. Now, I, I'm hoping this Chinese food isn't kind of too Russianized. <laughs> So good. Oh, so good. I'm really pleased. After our Chinese meal, we went back to Maria's and had a very Soviet and confusing dessert. Can you show the world you your ice cream? So, okay. so, if you was to read that in the Latin alphabet, you read it as C C C P. Mm -hmm. I always thought that meant C C C P, something like the Communist er uh, Party. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's not. The CCCP is Cyrillic. The C is actually what letter? S. S. So it's S. 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 S and R. 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 What does SSSR mean? The Union of Soviet yeah. Socialistic yeah. Republic. USSR. Okay, so mm. this is this is where now I'm confused. 
Okay, and I've been confused in my whole journey. Mm. And now I want to make sure I know this before I leave Russia. The part I don't understand is this thing. I'm going to work backwards. Mm -hmm. R means Republic. Mm -hmm. S means Socialistic. Mm -hmm. S means Soviet. Mm -hmm. why, why does S mean Union? Because in Russian um, the word begins with S and in English begins with U. Union. Russian it's like, ah, ah, it's like ah. yeah, so you use Soviet, a socialist <laughs> republic. Republic, okay. And that, my friends, <laughs> is the end of my confusion. <laughs> my brain is so knackered. And as everyone knows, the remedy to a knackered brain is a night in the bar. And after I told the barman my whiskey's on fire, he put it out with this coffee. Now high on caffeine and low on inhibitions, Maria and I then chatted up a guy in the bar and persuaded him to perform with us. My name's Gordon, this is Ruslan, and we have Maria on the front. Hey, 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 hey. And uh, so yeah, this is my first day. Uh, I arrived in Vladivostok this morning, and uh, so this is a cool kind of first night for me in a uh, lit far east part of Russia. And uh, we're going to play you a song. <laughs> Day with Maria at work, I went to explore the city and was struck by the Asian influence on the streets, visible in the city's Chinese food, Korean fashion, and Japanese cars. My first stop of the day was the State Museum, which tells the story of the Vladivostok region, beginning with its wildlife, where there are more Siberian tigers here than anywhere else in the world. The first people here are the indigenous Udige people, who practice shamanism and lived along the rivers. But from the year 700 saw the rule of the Korean and Chinese dynasties. Finally, in only 1860, China ceded the region to Russia, and Vladivostok, meaning ruler of the east, was founded as Russia's far eastern capital. Today, Vladivostok is most well known for being Russia's Pacific naval base, the end of the Trans-Siberian Railway, and as any superfan of the Magnificent Seven and the King and I will tell you, it's the birthplace of probably the most famous Russian-born actor, 
You bring up. The triumphal arch was built in 1891 to mark the visit of the then Crown Prince Nicholas, who laid the very first pile of soil for the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, which would connect European Russia to the Russian Far East. My final tourist attraction was the S-56 submarine. Known as the most successful Soviet submarine in World War II, it sank 10 enemy ships and survived intact to become this museum. But of course, the best part of the museum was not the glass displays, but the actual submarine itself. It's like crystal maze. Joseph. Hi, sir. Look really easy. Oh wow, look at these. So now we've got uh, bunk beds, we're in the bunk room. It's just like being on the uh, Trans Siberian Railway again. In fact, it's better than that because you've got a lot more space. Although well, you are surrounded by a nuclear arsenal. Which, uh, it's, mo it's most disconcerting. Hello, hello. Hola, hola, hola. Oh. Look at this, the kid was in there. He was like in the rocket launcher. That'd be funny if they blasted the kid out there. <laughs> Bang. Maria and I are now in a Korean restaurant called Pyongyang. Maria, are you enjoying the food? Yeah, it tastes so, so good. It is, it is delicious. Do you, do you like this or do you like pelmeni more? No, I like this. Okay. I don't like pelmeni. Okay, so Maria doesn't like pelmeni. Yeah, so that relationship between Korea, Japan, China to the far east of, of Russia, I've noticed it in signs, many more restaurants, a lot of cars from Japan and not so many of Russian cars, a lot of Russian cars uh, there? We have some, but very, not very often, not very rarely. Very, okay, so much rarer. This is really interesting part of Russia, just, which I never knew about before coming here. So exciting to be in this part of the world. We then went for a night drive around the city and were joined by Maria's friends, Olga and Vladimir. Not that one. Do you feel quite lucky to be from Vladivostok? I think that I don't want to go to uh, other city. I want to live from Vladivostok. Yeah, I like the city very much as well because I have been to St. Petersburg, to Moscow and I didn't like the cities as much as Vladivostok because uh, Vladivostok has something unique mostly it's uh, very close uh, uh, Japanese and China yeah. yeah And as I soon found out it wasn't only Vladivostok's Asian culture that made it unique mm. uh, Two days ago a tiger? Yeah, there was a tiger in the city two days ago It's just from the forest? Yeah Yes, she's from the forest and she's like, hmm, and I can <laughs> walk on the streets. I want to go to Vladivostok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to have uh, some sharks and it was an unusual situation because one shark bited one man. It turned out that it was my previous guitar player. Oh no! Yeah, two arms of him. So now he bit the shark. Yeah. Bit yeah. Both arms yeah, of yeah. your guitar player. My previous, or your previous yeah. guitar player. Yeah, yeah. Also, we have bears. <laughs> yes. Brown bears, they are not uh, dangerous because oh, they are oh, afraid yeah, yeah, of yeah, people yeah, yeah. and uh, you can say boo and uh, he'll <laughs> run away. Coming from London, like I think I don't, we don't really think about uh, tigers and bears <laughs> and sharks. Yeah. And are there these... some dangerous things? The most dangerous thing we have in, in England forest, are what? other human beings. <laughs> Ah, that's a chocolate. Okay, I'll get one of these. Just eating the chocolate algae. It leaves like a very weird slimy taste in your mouth, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this is the algae. Ah. When we invite other countries and mm. uh, other cities, we take it uh, with us and uh, it's like a present, a good present. Yeah. Because, um, uh, only in Vladivostok uh, we have chocolate with uh, algae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have many very like unique <laughs> Vladivostok yeah. types of things. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
And so, as I ended my two days in Vladivostok on Eagle's Nest Hill, I could reflect that whilst Vladivostok's Pacific waters with its Sea of Japan and picturesque harbour made it a beautiful city, it was Vladivostok's European and Asian cultural mix that made it an interesting one. And now driving to the airport after 30 intense days of cultural exploration, I can conclude that there are 10 themes that shape my final thoughts on this country. 1. Size I've just turned around the corner and uh, I've turned into this. It's massive. When I was in St. Petersburg, I thought the river there was big, but this is twice the size. Big Lenin, big theatre. This summarises my feelings of Russia. Everything is big. 2. Multiculturalism People sometimes they don't believe that they're from Russia. <laughs> and there is a lot of uh, mixed bloods. Nationality and nation. Nation. Yep. For us are different things. Three, conservative values. European me, my Russian family, my... 25 is the age of having children. Okay. We already had the many changes in stable situation in small reform. Four, the Russian demeanor. So when you're happy and when you're smiling, you look weird, oh, okay. like a window. The Russians, let's say, who have a surface of hard if you go underneath, yeah. they're very friendly. Yeah. I feel very privileged to be eating with your lovely family. <laughs> Thank you. Five, political disillusionment. All guys involved in politics, and they all are about corrupt. In England, people would be outraged, but here it is normal, and so yeah. nobody does anything. We are the best. We are the best. Cheap kind of implementation of the idea that you were the best into the kids. Six. Esoteric food. That's different. That is different. It's so weird. Oh my god. What on earth is that? I, I cannot. I will not. I cannot eat more. Seven. The Soviet Union's legacy. Use a uh, Stop many minds. The most sculpted person ever. Only after Jesus. Lenin. Now we have a church, yeah. but don't have mine. Eight, nature. For me, this is magical, beautiful place. For you, this is normal. Like every day, like, oh, <laughs> beautiful. Because when we are children, we all want to move elsewhere. I'm the only one of everyone I know who is still here. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's nice, that is. Nine, understated roles in Western history. I want to be cosmonaut. Old boys <laughs> want to. You be you, you be like, like, yeah, yeah. Russia won the war. Yeah. Ruth Britain and America. Here you can see the people who participated right. in the war from our region. We all know about Hitler's concentration camps, and nobody really talks about the gulags. There's so much going on there. And lastly, ten, the Trans-Siberian Railway, because without it, large-scale people and goods wouldn't have been able to move freely around Russia. Russia's big cities might still have remained provincial medieval towns, and this journey would have taken 11 months on horseback instead of one in the comfort of this carriage. In sum, travelling across Russia has been my most rewarding journey I have ever taken, and that is not because of the amazing things I saw or done, but rather it's because of the amazing people I met, whose warmth and good nature will be the first thing I associate when I think about Russia. We're lost, aren't we? We're a little yeah, bit lost. Yeah, been, oh. Even Karina's asking the locals, like, where is this really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> His English is better than your English. Yeah. <laughs> we could go out any day, any night. Maybe I'll take you there one direction. That's how it sounds in Russian. <laughs> I really enjoyed how it sounds, how it sounds in English. Why, why is this one crazy? This is a cow. It's for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, insect this big ball of shit. <laughs> Very good English. Let's move on. Hello. <laughs> Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> Traditional? It's a. Um, I Ah, I'm very excited. What do you reckon? It's nice. Nice. It's nice. Okay, good. It's going. It's in. It's in. The sour cream is in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Too late now. Too late the Trans-Siberian Railway and I was saying oh how cool it is up in Russia do you think this is a cool thing to do? No it's the worst thing uh, in the world Is it warm there? Do you need blankets or anything? If you have an extra one or two blankets that would be helpful Yesterday's temperature was how much here in Ulan Ude? Minus 17 Minus 17? No Great Britain will You will see 
suggest you as a... You? Let's see. You as a... He, he, he just played that, and I immediately went, Wonderful. <laughs> Pornhub is now definitely banned. It's banned, is it? Oh, I think so. And when? I never used it, so I... <laughs> And now, having travelled over ground from London to Vladivostok, I was taking my first flight on this adventure. Join me in the third and final leg of Modern Grand Tour, where we'll discover Asia and Australia, and where in the next episode, we'll explore the capital of South Korea, Seoul, where we'll go to a poo cafe, learn about the Korean War, get into K-pop, eat some of the best and hottest food I've ever had, experience a Halloween street party, and I'll even manage to meet some of those good old locals. So until next time, Spasiba. Ah! And Godspeed.